everyone, this is Weapons Tech Mac coming to you from deep in the heart of Texas. And tonight I'm just gonna do a little video. If you like 1911 format, uh, you'll like this video, I think. I'll show you a little, my collection of 1911s. It's not very big, but I'm uh, slowly but surely adding to it. I'm not done, although it's much more difficult today to find some of the ones I'd really like to get. Next in line is a Kimber Raptor 2. And uh, so far the places I prefer to buy from, it's out of stock. Now, uh, of course the 1911, show you my old GI model ATI. I've done a uh, review on this and I'll just kind of go down each one of these and then show you them all together. Um, it's just a good old classic American uh, handgun and invented so long ago. Good heavens, almost 100 and, well, 110 years ago is when uh, they got the patent for this thing. And, and in some cases, soldiers and sailors and even some police department, sheriff departments across the United States are still using these things. They're a pretty reliable handgun. And uh, so here I've got the ATI. That's just a cheap old uh, um, 1911 made by American Tactical out of uh, the Philippines. Of course, there's a lot of 1911s that are made in the Philippines. Uh, Rock Island Armory is made over there. And I found these ATI guns are pretty good. I haven't had any issues with this. It's a really good shooter. Of course, I've already done a review on this, but this is kind of the classic 1911 uh, based on the old Colt. Next, <clears throat> I've got my Springfield EMP. Of course, that's 1911 format. It's a, it's a little... Uh, ultra setup it's very small um, now i've done a review on this before so if you're interested in looking at the mps uh, this is in 40 and this has uh, nine plus one and it's uh, got the bull barrel and night sights it's one of my regular edcs and uh, it's just a pretty pistol you look at the whole thing as a whole very pretty, a uh, lot of real cool work went into it. Of course, since it's got the bull barrel, it's a little bit different to take down. It's got to pull back and you got to have a little thing to keep back the, the spring guide rod and then you can pull it out. It's not got the bushing per se, like the old standard 1911. But this is a, one of my favorite carry guns, really accurate little pistol. And it's pretty small and compact. Okay, I'll tell you. When we want to talk about small and compact 1911 format, when we go with the Kimber ESV, I've already done a review on this little guy. That's a nine millimeter. And uh, it's just a real pretty gun with the, the rose color, rose gold or gold color uh, barrel in there. It's not ported or anything like that, but it's got them slots in the slide, this guy, I guess, to, give it a little extra or make it look cool, whatever. But this thing's a very accurate little pistol as well. Um, it holds eight plus one and it's got night sights. Um, of course you can get other extended magazines to take it out to nine. All right, so this is a, a summer EDC or a backup if I need one. Okay, this is another one of my regular carries, especially in the winter. That's my Dan Wesson. I've already done a review on the Dan Wesson. It's a Dan Wesson Vigil Commander. It's a commander style, so it's a little bit shorter. A four inch barrel. It's got an aluminum frame. Uh, stainless steel with the fa fancy duty black, I think is what they call it, upper. And with the stainless steel, it's, it's a lot, uh, a lot less weight than your standard all metal frame uh, 1911s. And this thing is, this is a nail driver. This is extremely accurate. 
Now this dude, <clears throat> these things, <laughs> they're pretty expensive, between twelve and fourteen hundred dollars. Uh, but boy, I tell you, when you shoot it, you can see that difference in the the money. Now I don't know if there are some people don't want to spend that much money on a on a pistol, but there are some that spend way more. But uh, again, it's got the classic uh, 1911 lines, and it does have a bushing, comes apart like the usual 1911 format. But this is a this is a fun gun to shoot. Plus, I know it's got my back. It's gonna go boom when I point it at somebody, and when I point it at somebody, it's gonna hit them too. This thing is extremely accurate, even for my old man eyes. All right, next, <clears throat> and I'm currently working on a review for this Smith and Wesson 1911. That's a full frame, full size 1911, all steel. Uh, pretty heavy, pretty gun, a good shooter. Um, of course, it's got eight or nine plus one, depending on your magazines. And uh, this one does have the striations up front. You'll notice none of these have the uh, rail or anything at the bottom. But uh, these are good old classic 1911 lines on them. And uh, this is extremely uh, accurate and fun pistol to shoot. Well, I tell you, at the beginning, when I first got this thing, it, it had a pretty heavy duty spring in it and trying to rack back the slide. Yeah, you had to have some horsepower to get that slide back there, but it's eased up a bit. But uh, nice shooter. When it's good and cold outside, I sometimes carry this. Um, and the last of my collection is a Star BM9. This is like a bander size. Uh, and it's the, the Star version of the Star B, except this is a BM, which is smaller. And of course, Star is made in Spain. And it's a nine millimeter. And I just cleaned it up a bit. I did find these really awesome grips on the internet. And they weren't too much, maybe $35. And it makes this pistol just look real nice. It's a good shooter. Um, for $169, I picked that up at J&G oh, two, three years ago when there was a whole ton of them out there. And I picked it up for $169. You can't beat that. For this, it's just a real fun shooter. I mean, a, a glove box gun, a truck gun, whatever, a garage gun. <clears throat> uh, pretty accurate. Uh, it breaks down just a little bit different than than uh, the standard 1911. But that's kind of a, a look at my 1911 collection. I'll bring you over here and kind of let you look at them and uh, uh, get the full size and scope of them. All right, so there they are, all in comparison and size to each other. You can see these two right here are the smallest, although this one right here is a lot heavier. This is, is a pretty light gun since the frame's aluminum. Um, this has all metal frame. Now, if you get the EMP9, Instead of the MP40, the 9 has an aluminum frame, and then, of course, the steel slide. Well, it's got steel on both, and I think the extra weight helps the uh, the recoil because it's not a very big gun. Then you can kind of see in comparison to the Star BM9, and then the full size, the two full size was up here, and then the Vigil Commander there. I just really like all of these guns. And I have a lot of people every once in a while saying, hey, are you going to like call the herd anytime soon? There'll be times I, I sell guns. But uh, you know, I don't think I want to get rid of any of these 45s. One. Springfield EMP. Here we go.
anyway, coal in the herd. I tell you, I sell quite a few guns throughout the year and I buy fried quite a few guns throughout the year. Um, if a gun kind of gets on my bad side, I'll get rid of it. Whether it's shooting a little bit wrong or not ejecting the brass the way I like it. Now I'll tinker with it, try and fix it up. And there are some of them I've been able to fix, no problem at all. But uh, some of them, you know, I just, uh, okay, this just doesn't uh, suit my trigger and I'll sell them out. But uh, boy, I tell you, I do like me some 1911s. You know, years ago when I was in the Navy, I had got a hold of a uh, uh, <clears throat> Colt 1911. That was just kind of your basic um, GI style 1911 my buddy had gotten. And well, he'd gotten it and uh, I was getting ready to move from Virginia and I had a couple old cars. One of them was an old uh, 74 Gremlin, I think it was. And uh, he offered me that gun for the old Gremlin and I traded. So, you know, I traded old Colton. <clears throat> GI model Colt 1911 for a Gremlin. Now I probably should have held on to that, but that, that Colt, it was just a GI model. It had the, the, the front blade sight was fixed and it, it was not a very accurate pistol. And then later on, <clears throat> I had somebody else offer me what I thought was a pretty good price for it. So I sold it. You know, it's kind of interesting. Back in the day, you know, you think you, 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 you get something maybe in a pawn shop or a gun show or whatever, and uh, you pay some really low price for it. And <clears throat> um, a few years later, you sell it and you think you did really good. That's kind of what I think happened with that Colt because right now, any kind of Colt 1911 generally going for a pretty good price. But, uh, my wife often kids me about trading a car for a gun, but I did. I thought it was a pretty good trade. One of the things that uh, I'm very particular in the 1911s, because one of them saved my life when I was a military cop, and you know it, it, it put down the threat without any problems. Um, whereas uh, the other carry gun that our department was using was the old Ruger Security 6, and I don't think those 38s with the 158 grain wad cutter would have done the job, or the 45, it did. Um, let's see, what else I want to talk about these things. If you ever get a chance to get a 45, do so. And uh, you see some of these come in, like maybe the Star, or the Star B, or the Star BM9 come out. Go and pick them up. Eventually, they're going to be worth more than what you spent. You know, one of the guns that I bought when I was living back in Virginia in the Navy, I picked up an M1 carbine at a pawn shop for $89. And it was from 1944. I think it was a Singer. I held on to it for about six years. And it's a fun gun to shoot. And uh, I needed some money. Guy offered me $300 for it, and I'm like, good heavens, I like triple my value of it. Man, I wish I had that gun right now. Of course, those things are going $1,400, $1,500, dollars for those guns, especially the ones out of World War II that are in real good shape. Now, I've got one that I'm working on. I, I, I got it on layaway at one of the shops here. I paid a pretty price for it, but it's going to be my spring break project gun and it's a it's a an m m1 carbine 1944 but uh I, it's not the singer but uh anyway this is weapons tech mac coming to you from the deep in the heart of texas gotta love me some 1911s i i surely do now i know there's haters out there that don't like the 1911 well then don't get them but those of us that do, don't rip on us. 1911 has been a tried and true platform for over 100 years. And uh, they're a fun gun to shoot. And so, signing off from deep in the heart of Texas. God bless Texas. 
God bless the United States of America, and long live the Republic. A thousand